about uh, 45 k's east of Antakya now, uh, mountain region and background. I'm not going to show you where I am uh, for obvious reasons. Um, just a bunch of old farmhouses, uh, not much to look at. Um, so apparently we're going to be met around 5. Um, we then get over the border, a mix of walking and on horseback. This is how we secretly got into Syria, very quietly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can hear us arrive. <laughs> Top secret. <laughs> Top secret, huh? Yeah. <laughs> The Syrians who helped us get in were young men in their 20s, activists who'd chosen to fight the regime with their heads instead of with guns. They invited us into their homes, we stayed with their families, and their hospitality was without equal. The people here in Benish um, are certainly afraid of an attack, but they also seem fairly upbeat at the moment. Um, some of the families seem to have come back. They sent a lot of the women and children away in anticipation of an attack, uh, given that Assad's forces are currently in Idlib, which is only five kilometers to our west. We've been trying to get into Idlib for a few days now, but uh, apparently the roads are just, just there's no way, it's not secure, um, but we'll keep trying. Um, but they're organizing another big protest uh, for tomorrow, tomorrow being Friday. Um, and they're certainly still very vocal in their hatred of the Assad regime. Just in a car um, going from Benish back to Serakim. Uh, we've taken all the back roads. The driver here has been absolutely brilliant. Um, phoning ahead to see if there are checkpoints. Um, going really slowly around bends in the road to see if there was anything unexpected there. We passed one old army, a Syrian army checkpoint, but we're back in Serakim now. Nearby, we watched as government forces amassed, their trucks and tanks clearly visible. It was obvious that something was coming. T-72 heavy tanks had been seen entering Sarakib from the south, and free Syrian army rebels prepared themselves as best they could for the imminent attack. We've pushed in with a Katiba, with several Katibas. There's probably about uh, 40 guys here or so. Large area of open ground, uh, which wasn't ideal. Um, we've now got a motorway directly off our left, which we can't cross because it's a motorway. There's a footbridge, but they've got two T-72s right there next to the footbridge. So we've basically walked into um, a bad area. Um, so obviously it's time for tea and lots of discussion, and where is NATO, and we've only got Kalashnikovs. But uh, um, certainly so far with uh, this group, this, this is going nowhere. It's 9.30. Um, so the best thing to do is get out of here as safely as we can. Seven people were killed and 28 wounded, and afterwards came the burials, the martyrs, those killed in their homes or in defense of their town.
After two weeks, it was time to leave the arable fields and olive groves of northern Syria. We'd seen just a fraction of what the Assad regime is doing to its citizens, but it's pretty shocking. He uses heavy armor and cannons to crush those who still peacefully protest against the regime every Friday. But while Assad may control the ground with brute force, he appears to have lost all control over the people of Idlib province.